the demographics are startling. Young investors are completely ingrained in crypto investing like nothing we've ever seen. This generation is riding along with enormous creation of wealth. But when these young investors start to only invest in companies that have cryptocurrency on its corporate balance sheet. Um, Zeb, what do you think about that? Yeah, I, I don't think uh, when it comes to the equity side of investing that they're on, that the young investors are only targeting companies with crypto on the balance sheet. I do think there is a draw to cryptocurrency. Um, you know, part of it could be, you know, the the idea of potentially getting fast money. I mean, we see what happened with Bitcoin. People want to find the next one so that you go to Ethereum, you jump onto Doge and you continue to kind of go out on the risk curve. I think it is somewhat maybe also maybe a distrust for the financial system. Like a lot of young investors, you know, it was 2008. Now this happened, we're constantly printing money. You know, the way Bitcoin kind of came about was after 2008, how do we protect our the value that we've saved and stuff when, when all this money printing is happening and you're getting, you know, devaluation and stuff. So I think it's, it's a combination of fast money, also, you know, a distrust for sort of the centralized financial system. We hear, you know, the DeFi terms going around. Um, that said, I, I do think um, there, there, you have to approach this with a bit of caution. Like the, I, I, I too often hear various cryptocurrencies just kind of getting bucketed in and the variance that the various differences are not being spoken about for, you know, Bitcoin, you have the store value argument because there's 21 million that can ever be mined. And, and that kind of speaks to a store of value. Whereas Doge, I think you have 130 billion already, you know, in circulation, another 5 billion coming online or being mined. Um, every year. It doesn't necessarily have the utility in that we're not getting ecosystems built on top of it or experimented within the way that we're getting it with Ethereum. Um, so there are so many cryptocurrencies that I think there's a massive risk in kind of bucketing them all together. Um, you know, so, and, and again, like I, I understand the draw. Unfortunately, um, you know, sometimes the only way to learn is to get burned. I, it certainly happened to me in investing. I got burned. I realized, you know what, maybe I should be looking at income statements and balance sheets and, and, and listening to conference calls. Um, but I, 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 don't, I don't think when it comes to equities, they're just targeting Bitcoin on the balance sheet. It's more so may, maybe what it really is, is that Bitcoin on the balance sheet is showing investors this is a forward looking management team. We're not, you know, it's not stuck in its ways. They are willing to adopt new tech, technology. So maybe it's the idea that they're embracing innovation that is more attractive to young investors rather than simply, oh, these guys have Bitcoin on the balance sheet. Let me give them my money kind of thing. Yeah, learning the hard way, right? In case if, if you're investing and you do lose money, hopefully you, you, you don't lose everything and you you somehow somehow learn learn the uh, learn the hard way. The the best I, I always say the, the the best trade I ever made was a, a company. Uh, I put an army paycheck on it. It went bankrupt. I lost everything. Um, but for six hundred bucks, I learned a lesson on due diligence. So it's kind of the cheapest lesson you could ever learn. That's a cheap lesson, if you ask me.